at the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lowdown Show Remix right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and NXT and, and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow us on Instagram at No Holds Barred WP. One word if you are into that sort of Instagram thing. You can also follow myself on Twitter at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co host at Corporate Cappy. If you guys want to listen to the podcast on the go, we are available to listen to on Spreaker. Spreaker is a fantastic podcast app. It is available for all Android and Apple devices. We are live on there, and after we are done, the offline version is posted on there for you to download as well. We are also available to listen to on iTunes and Stitcher, and it would help if you go over there and give us a five-star rating. If you want to watch episodes of the podcast and other episodes such as Derby Headlines and other stuff like that, 2K content, all that jazz, we have a YouTube page, youtube.com slash NHBWR. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and I'm joined, as always, on the Lowdown Show. He is the blissful boss. He is my co-host, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Captain. Very blissful today from the news we got. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Jesus. And we've been gone for my about a week. Excited. We had a week absent. And uh, we're back. Back. Back in black. Back, back no, in yellow. Last week, last week was like a recap, and they had like one match. Yeah. We really didn't need to review that. And... <laughs> I mean, I would have rather reviewed Jinder Mahal, you know, in-ring promo than that. Oh, we, we can't. We cannot. But uh, that match was really good. That match actually delivered. Uh, it was what everyone expected. Obviously, the outcome wasn't was going to have Johnny Gargano win the UK title. But it was really close. There was a lot of a lot of good points in that match. That it, it came down to it, especially the whole mouth guard thing at the end. That was awesome. Um, that was great, great, great. Uh, but yeah, mostly just recaps. And then this week was interesting. Uh, it wasn't from uh, Full Sail University. We had it from, uh, it, it was in San Antonio at the Aztec Theater. I don't know what was going on with that, but I remember last year they did something where they did a taping somewhere. It was at the Arnold Classic. They did an NXT taping. So uh, apparently they're back at full sale next week, so we get everything back to normal. Um, anyways, guys, a little change to the format of the Lowdown Show. I'm not doing the video version anymore for the Lowdown Show. It'll be just be, it'll be posted on YouTube, but it'll be uh, just with the graphic. Uh, I'm choosing just to keep the video versions of our podcast strictly for WWE headlines and anything we do after that. So no more video version for this, the Lowdown Show, unfortunately. I don't know if anyone actually cares, but. <laughs> well, they want to see your, they want to see your beautiful mug, you know. No, I'll have to wait for WWE headlines for that. But I'm keeping it strictly podcast form for the Lowdown Show I just think I don't know. It's something I wanted to do. I, I I'm just I always I'm always looking for like an NX T shirt or something to wear on the Lowdown Show. And sometimes I just really don't feel like changing into another shirt for the camera. So I got more time <laughs> on the weekends. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes my my mug's not beautiful enough for for that night. So yeah, you got to do your hair that night. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> got to make sure that one follicle of hair is up. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I as, as bald as Antonio Cesaro, let's put it that way. <laughs> um, uh, but in the chat, we have Glorious Greg. What's going on? The Glorious One is here, and we got Cupid Girl 125. Little Miss Tricks is here, oh and God. Woken. Oh, yes. <laughs> we have more of the tease of Matt Hardy this week. Uh, he looks like they're fully, uh, I don't know. Uh, apparently, I wanted to know more why they, they made a... They made such an effort to zoom in the camera on Matt Hardy and make him do delete like a million times. <laughs> and it's because apparently Anthem and TNA have finally said that they're not going to pursue the broken gimmick anymore. And Matt Hardy is going to be allowed to trademark it. And yeah, apparently he... they're also letting more, or more talent uh, use their gimmick outside of TNA. Well, apparently from what I heard from one of our good friends, he said that the you have to wait till like December eighteenth or something yeah, for them yeah. to finally use it, mm -hmm. because then it'll be like washed away, and if good. TNA doesn't pursue it from there, so maybe they'll just slowly build it up until then, give it like a slow build. I would love if they incorporate Jeff Hardy into it. Like I've heard a few <laughs> ideas which are pretty good, but I don't know. It, Brother it sucks Nero. when he's injured. 
But uh, Michael Chow, Michael Chow TV, the podcast is joining the chat, guys. He has an awesome wrestling podcast as well. If you love us, you will love him. He is the host that runs the West Coast, and apparently he puts in the chat, the Chow Solution is here. Oh, my oh. God. Yeah, I guess we can talk about that, too, since uh, we've been gone for a couple weeks, and we really don't talk about Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. Like, I, I even, like, tweeted to Michael Chow, like, I, I wish I could still review Raw and SmackDown, but it's just it's still so bad, especially this week. It's been, like, like SmackDown was all right, but it was, like, snooze central. Um, my girl's back on TV, so I have something worth watching on Monday Night Raw every week. Um, but this faction that they made with her and calling it Absolution... Like I, I'm agreeing with half the people out there that say they think of absolute vodka right off the bat. <laughs> like it's just like, come on, man! It seems like I feel bad for Paige because that's two factions now where they they name it right off the bat and it's already bad. Like when they first did this, this <laughs> what was it? Uh, something sor- sorority? What was it? Uh, the submission sorority. sorority. Yeah, and, pe- it, and it was a freaking <laughs> porno name. Yeah, that was great. And then Team PCB. Like, that's even <laughs> worse, too. And then now Absolution. Do they really need to name the faction? Can they just be the faction? Like, like Paige and her, her, her like, Rampagers. They could have just done that. And now we got the Riot Squad on SmackDown. <laughs> oh, my God. And they're not, again, I, I was hoping, I was hoping that this was going to be, like, a whole, like, it was Paige having two factions on both shows. But it's not. It's just they copied the same idea for both. Like, I don't understand. I know it, it looks like it's ultimately leading up to just increasing the women's rosters to have the women's Royal Rumble match. But why the hell would you copy the same idea on two shows? Why would you have it different? That makes literally no fucking sense. That's just pure laziness. Now you're just telling people how lazy you are. Literally, bluntly showing it. <laughs> I mean, I, I do like how... The, the women's division needed a facelift. It was they were both yeah, getting pretty dry. Did. But to bring in like the same exact thing for both shows and have them not be intertwined at some and point. Some people going, you really picked her over something. And someone brought up a good point. I was listening to a couple podcasts over uh, the last week now. Someone brought a good point. They're like, you really chose to release Emma and had nothing to do. You had, you, you chose to release Emma because you had nothing to do with her. But then you brought up a girl like Mandy Rose, who you haven't done nothing with her since the start. And is Ruby Riot really leader material? Yeah, she's she seems like she'd be like that second hand person. She's not like Paige is perfect for that role because she she's got the mic skills and she's got the got that leader presence. Yeah, but Ruby Riot beating Charlotte this week, I was like, I was still uncomfortable about it. I was it like, seems really? To me like it's just Vince is seeing how good the factions are working NXT, so he wanted to copy it, and it's literally like fucking blowing up in his face. I don't know. Sonya Deville, I really hope, like, she breaks off from this. I mean, she can be sick on her own. Sonya Deville is, like, a legit threat to, like, a woman's division. She's a beast. Yeah. Mandy, not so much. Oh, well, Mandy is, uh, she's nice to look at. Yeah, and and ran- like to Randoms that. on the other one. Sarah Logan, of all people. Like, where the fuck did that come from? Where did they I mean, pick she, Sarah Logan? She's like, she's, like, the muscle of the faction, which yeah. makes sense. But, like, they, they picked up three girls from NXT for the SmackDown side that, like, weren't doing anything. Like, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, and Riot were doing, like, literally nothing. And it was funny because on NXT, for the last two weeks, or for at least this week and the week after, they're doing Sonya Deville versus Ruby Riot. It's yeah. like, That's what? That's just weird, yeah. They, they should have waited. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, you know what they, they should have done? They should have had Paige tease it. They should have not debuted yet, and they should have had Paige tease that like she didn't come back alone, and people are wondering what the hell she's talking about. And then when they finally ran out of that storyline on NXT, it would have made more sense. But it's like, the, we gotta, again, Derby always pulls the trigger way too early on shit. And here we go. We got another case. But uh, Something here that has potential, too. Again, like it's, it's just it sucks because I really want to review Raw and SmackDown so bad again. But I can't, I can't bring myself to reviewing it when you put shit like, again, Kane still on fucking TV on Monday Night Raw. And they're, they're feeding Finn Balor to this fucking guy. And basically, pun- <laughs> I don't know if they're punishing Finn Balor because of what he's been doing on social media. And basically shoving it in Vince's face saying he's over. And he like re- he took a picture of the poll on WWE dot com that's like has an, had an overwhelming vote it was like who do you want to see face Brock Lesnar for the universal title uh next he his picture that he screenshotted had Finn Balor at like 35 percent and like everyone else was at like six percent or eight percent or five percent 
Um, so it was like overwhelming. And he's like, not over, right? Like he's basically shoving it in, in Vince's face. I saw a screenshot of like later on in the day what that poll was at. It was like 80 something percent for Finn Balor, and the rest were still down in the tens. <laughs> like, unbelievable. They need I think this is punishment. I think this is Vince going, like, you know, Vince doesn't take shit from anybody. All right, you want to be like a jackass? I'm just going to feed you to Kane and make him squash you every goddamn week. <laughs> like Kane yeah, but it was in, there going, it was do in, I really have to? But it was in Knoxville this week, so you know Kane had to be in the main event since he's running for mayor of Knoxville. He doesn't have here. to be in the main event. He can be in the middle of the show. That's where yeah, they put but, their main event anyways. Yeah, but University of Tennessee popped for corporate Kane, man. Fucking awful. Another thing I want to I nitpick about the main roster is this. A lot of people have been talking about it. I know we haven't been around for a week or two now, and I couldn't really talk about it. Um, This Greg Hamilton thing it really pissed me off. <laughs> How they're, they, they're making him not do the pause for the one fall thing. Do they really have to nitpick little things like that? I, I don't know if anyone else has noticed that. But Greg Hamilton, that used to be his thing. He used to wait. And like he used to, like, this falling contest is scheduled for one fall. And he used to wait for the crowd to go, one fall. Like, it was his thing. Apparently, creative and, and the, the backstage heads don't like that because they don't like the announcers uh, getting over. Apparently, it's the announcer's job to get the talent over. So that's why they made him stop doing that. Because they, they were scared he was getting more over than the superstars. How can an announcer get more over than the superstars? What the fuck are you talking about? An announcer can add to a superstar. I don't understand why people can't like announcers. Why can't they stand it? out? That makes them good announcers. Yeah. What, are you going like, to have plain at announcers Finkel. from look now at, on? Look at Tony Schimmel. Like, those guys st- stood out for a reason. And it, Telling the me fact that they took that, that away tell from him? Guys why, to stop? What was the problem? What was the problem for him waiting like five seconds more? <laughs> he wasn't saying anything different. <laughs> and you're basically you're taking the fun away from the crowd. People pay money for these tickets to go and have fun at these events. You're basically saying, no, you're not allowed to have fun. <laughs> so we're going to take that out. Unbelievable. Yeah. He's going to get more over than Roman. They don't want yeah, that. No, Vince, no one gets over. <laughs> but Roman. Unless your name is Roman Reigns, you're not allowed. But Roman Reigns not even going to get over. And I'm hearing podcasters say time and time again this past week how if they think that Roman, this is the way what they're doing with Roman right now is a good way to get him over. They're, they have a big another thing coming because once WrestleMania time comes and he beats Brock Lesnar for that Universal Championship, he's going to get fucking booed out of the building. Like, it's going to be bad. Like, it's going to be absolutely terrible. He's never getting over. And the fact that they don't see it is really bad. <laughs> Well, the, that's why they I can't think sit the whole shield thing is going to get him over, but, you know. It's just been rinse and repeat garbage, too, the last couple of weeks on Raw. Like, we're seeing really pointless feuds and the same feuds we've been seeing for the last couple of weeks and the same exact matches. Like, Joe. Why does Samoa Joe need to squash Titus O'Neil? He's face, like, he faced Titus O'Neil one week, then he faces Finn Balor last week, and he goes right back to facing Titus O'Neil this week. Why? What the fuck does that do for Samoa Joe? He's squashing <laughs> Titus O'Neil, the guy who's, like, the biggest jobber in your company right now. He's the next guy to get released. <laughs> The Titus Worldwide is going to get released? Guaranteed. Because apparently there's and, more cuts on the way, and we still haven't seen them yet. So, And I think, the thing is with those girls, too, like, I don't know if, especially the SmackDown ones, they, they need more, they need a leader because none of them are really finished products yet. Like, they're all still developing. Yeah. I don't know. It just it didn't didn't doesn't seem right to me. And then cringe Natty in there and oh, basically Raw's fucked up too. Raw has their universal champion who doesn't appear on TV. Now you put your IC title on Roman, who's never gonna fucking defend it, and treat the title like absolute shit. Oh, he defended it this week against Elias. Apparently, he's gonna be like the the John Cena open challenge. He doesn't need the the Intercontinental Championship. He doesn't need it. Well, Miz was going off to film a movie for two months, so. It belongs on someone like a Finn Balor, if they ever wanted to save Bray Wyatt again, a Bray Wyatt, or even Elias, who's actually proved himself to be actually a credible mid-card champion because he draws legit heat, something Roman will never, ever do. So, Well, Roman draws heat, but he's it's they're trying to get him to be babyface pop. I just, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I, it sucks. I actually, I actually didn't mind SmackDown this week, to be honest. I actually I had, liked. I like the whole KO and Sammy thing going on right now. I really like that a lot. And it seems like Daniel Bryan is starting to, like, have some, I don't know, disagreements with Shane, which could lead to something interesting. Yeah. I think and, 
then there was this thing about the, the that 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 faction where they asked. I think it was like I forget what her name is on SmackDown. She asked Daniel Bryan about like what what's that, what's that all about, and he kind of said no comment with like a weird smile. But then he like he was like he was definitely he was like suddenly interrupted by Kevin Owens. Like it was last week or the week before. Yeah, it was a week. It was last week. And I don't know. It was, it was weird. It's like they they were gonna mention something of it or and they they didn't. I don't know. Um, but speaking of SmackDown, I think I want to nitpick. It didn't happen this week because I forgot to watch SmackDown this week. It was last week. They had that whole lumberjack match, and they had Nakamura like the first one out. But it was like that generic SmackDown entrance thing, like where like, the music played and they all came out. What well, shouldn't they just have had Nakamura and Rude have their own entrances? Aren't they supposed to be the guys that they're, they're m- most of their character and most of their popularity comes from their entrance, right? So why did they have to come out with, like lumberjack retards and, and like just they, they come out and Nakamura's doing this this stupid like thing to like the SmackDown theme, and it's just like what the hell? Like this guy Nakamura and, and Rude are ruined. They're done. Well, they've ruined the aura of both those guys. It just. I, that, that really pissed me off when I seen that. I'm like, really? You couldn't just give them their entrance and then cut the break and make all the lumberjacks come out during the break. Oh, they got to save time, man. SmackDown's only two hours. But they got it. They got it. They can't. They're stealing the aura, like what you said, away from these guys. Who? Like, it's, I don't care anymore. NXT builds these guys up, and then when they get to the main roster, they just they completely just fall on their face after that. It's terrible. But it's a different way of booking down there. It's it is what it, it is what it is because it's, they're both never going to be the same. Until... Reaching their cookie jar and speaking of cookie jar, apparently uh, Boo or Blue or whatever you want to call him, Tista, it wants to come back. And I heard I listened to an interesting interview about Batista, and it kind of made me like, okay, and I kind of give him more respect. Apparently, when he came back, he really didn't want to come back as a face. He wanted to come back as a full edge heel. They didn't listen to him. He had created differences, and that's why he left. But he had a recent interview, and he said, if I come back, I don't want to be this part-time garbage person, you know, the cookie jar guy who just comes and gets hand to everything to him for being a part-time. He says he wants to be a full, he wants to be full-time. He wants to do house shows. He wants to do everything, and he wants to be a heel that actually puts people over, and he wants to do stuff that actually creatively makes sense. So I'll give Batista to that. Like, he wants to come back, but he said he'll only come back if that happens. He wants a full-time schedule. He wants all that, like, Put everything so he wants like to pull to what Jericho did last year. Yeah, basically something like that, and it's awesome. I I, I give him all. If he wants to do that, props to him. The only and thing he I, said in the interview, he's like, I'm worried about is if injury, because you know, obviously he's old. He's like, if in, a bad injury were to happen, that would have sucked for me because like it would just be a waste. So and plus, he's still big time movie star too. Yeah. So, so he's and the thing the was, fence. I feel I felt bad for him for his first run because like he just got shit on because everybody wanted Daniel Bryan and then he came back and just had a yeah. terrible time. Yeah. Anybody He's basically in the wrong place at the wrong time. He said that in the yeah. interview. He's like, I was basically put in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like, I didn't even want to be face when I came back. He's like, he was made to be a face. He's like, he, yeah. wa- he wanted to come back as a heel. He wanted to, do- he wanted to continue off from when he quit. <laughs> yeah. So, it sucks. Well, um, one more thing I wanted to talk about before Jinder? we get into NXT. No, it is not General Hall. It is the Darby pay-per-view schedule that they released. Mm. Or we can talk about John Cena being sued by Ford, but that's his own fault. Apparently he just got sued by Ford. News, like, literally right before we went on the air. Uh, for selling a car that he wasn't supposed to sell that Ford gave him. Or made him, that he was trying out. He just can't see the car, man. Way to go, John Cena. Speaking of John Cena, what about that toothbrush you saw? That was what? fantastic. The toothbrush that you saw? Oh, my God. I sent copy here. Oh, my God, guys. It was a toothbrush of John Cena. You press the button, the, the theme song plays as you're brushing your teeth. Like, it's a full a two-minute to song. Your day. Two minutes. To your it basically, it, it, it's, it's to help you brush your teeth the, 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 the proper amount of time. So you got to brush your teeth the, the entire theme song of John Cena. I, could, I couldn't think of anything worse to start my day than listening to that. Oh my god! And I guess it's a dual one, like the rocks on it too. And um, so when you press the right side, the rock theme plays for two minutes. Oh my god! But uh, anyways, there is a pay per view schedule. Pay per view schedule. Yeah, We've got a big um, five now. Yeah, we're turning into the big five. They have officially named No Mercy a uh, uh, dual branded pay per view, or not No Mercy Money in the Bank. Sorry. 
because I'm reading the, the schedule here, um, which is sick. I'm I'm all for that. Um, the thing that they haven't come out with is the details of Money in the Bank. Is it going to be each brand is going to have their own match, or are they going to have like three guys from Raw, three guys from SmackDown clash together, you know, and whoever wins will win the, you know, the contract for that respective brand, or does the contract, I would love to see if the contract was back on a dual brand basis, right? That gives more, like, uh, uncertainty and more, like, you know, like, you're, you're watching, you never know what's going to happen feel. Like, so whoever wins the briefcase can cash in on an either champion of his choosing. I think that's what they should do. So, my that's just my opinion, but Money in the Bank's apparently going to be a uh, dual-branded pay-per-view this year. I'm good with that. I mean, I don't think it should be limited to one brand. No. I like it. it it's no. one of those pay-per-views that people get excited for every year. Why not make it a dual-branded? Dual what do you think they should do? Like, Do you think like they should do like three from Raw, three from SmackDown? Or should they, like, should they both have their own matches at that pay-per-view? Because you're going to have to include know. the women now. Yeah, I would. I would probably just get do one, and whoever wins it go brings it to their brand type thing. Yeah. I but, think I would uh, love the idea. That, like they they're allowed to cash in on either champion. Like that means like both champions are put on edge, right? They don't know yeah. if like, the Raw guy's gonna come over to SmackDown and, and try to get the WWE title, or the Dar- SmackDown guy's gonna come over and get the Universal title, and then the GM's like, shit. Like, what if we lose our main championship? Or does that superstar yeah, go to the brand? It brings out a lot of question marks, a lot of interesting dynamics and storylines that come from yeah. it. So I'm all, I'm all for it. But if they want to make a big five, I really want them to cut the number of pay per views they have. Like these little shitty fucking so one apparently brand they did pay per views are yeah. garbage. So apparently like, they didn't do that, but they apparently they cut the amount of pay per views this year. That's what a that's basically what I'm getting out of this article. Um, so we had Royal Rumble in January, uh, at the end of January. At the end of February, we have Elimination Chamber, which is a raw branded pay per view. This is I don't agree with. In March, March 11th, they're bringing back Fastlane, and it's a SmackDown pay-per-view. Terrible. That's garbage. But, but as long as there's not two every month, you know what I mean? Like, if they do, like, Raw one month, SmackDown next month, and then, like, they have a dual-branded one. It I'm looks cool like it happens, that. like, it starts in the summer, because after WrestleMania, May 6th, so basically a month later, Backlash is a Raw pay-per-view this year. Then May 27th, SmackDown gets uh, payback. Uh, June 17th is a dual branded pay-per-view Money in the Bank and then Battleground gets Raw in July so like June Money in the Bank July Battleground August SummerSlam now September Extreme Rules is now in September for 2018 okay September 16th it's Raw and September 30th they're still keeping hell in the cell Smackdown and then TLC is happening in October and it's a Raw pay-per-view and then November Survivor Series, and then Clash of Champions is going to be SmackDown in December. I just do we really need all these pay per views? It's not like back in the day where you know you had to like sell these pay per views. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they were only on pay per view. That's what it's called. But now it's that it's on the network. Do they really need all these fucking pay per views? Like no. they don't even have time to build half of them. All the, like get rid of the terrible ones too. Like Fastlane, get the hell out of here. Gimmick pay per views, everyone terrible, yeah, terrible. Like gimmick, you don't big gimmick pay per views. I can accept their extreme rules because they they actually kind of use extreme rules as almost every match is like a certain type of hardcore match. Like there's a Hell in a Cell. They have one yeah. match. It's like why call it Hell in a Cell? Yeah. Um, Dadass Podcast has joined the chat just, just quickly. What's going on, Dadass Podcast? You're about to go live at 9 p.m. on YouTube, guys. Go check them out. Follow them on Twitter. Follow them on YouTube. They are a great relationship-based podcast, and they also like wrestling. So go follow them. That's a better reason to go follow them. Um, anyways, yeah. So schedules out. Interesting schedule. Uh, TLC weirdly in October and Extreme Rules in September. I wish it just scrapped TLC and just give us Halloween Havoc since they're bringing back all these WCW pay-per-view themes. Or maybe they're going to give it to NXT because I'd rather have NXT have it because they'll actually do something with it. More money grab garbage pay-per-views. Can't wait. Yeah. Um, oh. Before we start the show, I saw one little piece of news that we could talk about real quick. Apparently, Jim Johnson and WWE are done with their partnership. So that Ooh. ends a long, many-year wow. partnership with Jim Johnson. Not a lot of people knew some of the new theme songs were not done by CFO Dollar Signs. And CFO Dollar Signs, some people like go give him shit for some of the theme songs. And people and CFO will come out and be like, yeah, that wasn't us. But they won't say like it, it was Jim Johnson. 
So maybe there's like a but, hate thing going on. Yeah, there. maybe maybe he's lost touch now, but he's created some of the classic songs in wrestling history yeah. that wouldn't wouldn't get the guys as over as they were without those theme songs. So um, Jim Johnson, a legend as far as WWE music goes, and uh, mm-hmm. they're parting ways. So see you later, Jim Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so into the show, finally, we're, uh, I had to get that out of the way, because just, we missed a couple of weeks, and a lot of stuff's happened, I just want to touch base, I think we might do that for the Lowdown show from now on, just touch base, if something happens, interesting happens on Raw or SmackDown, we'll talk about it, because I know they, people want to hear our opinions on it, not just me ramble tweeting on, tweeting nonsense on Twitter, um, anyways, get into the show. Oh, yeah, hey, um, Michael Chow, is Great Balls of Fire done? Oh, Yeah. That wasn't in the schedule, so I'm hoping so. And you know, just <laughs> my, it'll be like a Derby Network event or something like that, which I guess apparently Derby is now now going. Oh shit, we should have made Starcade a network event. Well, duh. The whole world complained about it on the night of Starcade. Yeah, great. Um, so getting into NXT, I guess. Yes, the it, A it, show, it looked, the A, it looked, the true A show. It looked like they had like 30 people. In I know the it was stand. tough. You couldn't see the other side. There's actually a lot. I'd say maybe. I'd say anywhere from 150 to 300 could fit in that theater. Actually, no, I'm going to look up the actual uh, attendance in that theater. But it just they looked were weird. In... Like, they had, like, a giant, like, NXT sign on the side and then, like, a tiny entrance. Like, it was like, Yeah, because when they came this? out, they were right next to the ring. Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, the, yeah, the Aztec Theater in San Antonio, downtown San Antonio. And weird. It was just, it's one of those, I guess it was one of those NXT tapings where they did it in another city. I guess maybe they'll do it randomly. I mean, I like it. It gives, like, other cities a chance to, you know, get an, a, a taped NXT show. I mean, it's, it's fine with me. Um, I'm, at the, I'm, at this, I'm at the Wikipedia page for the Aztec Theater. There's no... Anywhere written, it, there's nowhere it's written what the attendance is for this place. Mm-hmm. Which is weird. But it was built in 1926. So it was an old place. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, on hard camera side, there was not many seats, but when no. they panned to the crowd, there was more. Because that, one that was side. the stage, eh? That was the stage you were looking at. Oh. <laughs> like the actual stage of the theater. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. Yeah. It just looked like, like, why did they do it at such a small place? I don't know. Kind of Anyways, good show. Season show for the start, I guess, the, the new season until the next takeover. It's almost like from takeover to takeover, it's a new, you know, it's almost like a new season. You know what I mean? Like it's like a t- it's obviously a TV show. You can base it off seasons, but okay, John uh, Cena. <laughs> we get uh, we get I guess well, we get continuing feuds, and then we get the potential starts of new feuds, sort of. And so we get something that happens that doesn't really make sense, which we'll get into. But uh, we open the show with a rematch from two weeks ago uh, with the Street Profits versus uh, Tito Sabatelli and Riddick Moss. And I just want to talk about this because like the Street Profits are so over, man. Like, they just went; this, these guys just went in here into San Antonio and. That was like the loudest pop of the night. That was insane. These guys are <laughs> incredibly over, man. And the crowd was yeah, so for something so them. simple. It's crazy. Literally, they're crime time 2.0, but like more popular. Um, and Montez Ford is just unbelievable athlete. So athletic. This guy, I cannot believe how incredibly athletic Montez Ford is. It's insane. And Angelo Dawkins comes in and gets a few. He's few slow, spots, man. But... Uh, to me, he's like you look at him and it's just like, why? Is this guy he molasses? Was doing... He was doing those like stinger splashes in the corner, and it was like I was watching it in slow motion. I honestly <laughs> thought like the TV was in slow motion. I had to check. I had to double check to see if it was still but, in I mean, real time. I mean, you put any most people beside on test four, they're going to look slow though. I mean, realistically, true. But I think they work well together though. I think they feed off each other well. But sure enough, probably they'll be called up to the main roster, and Angelo Dawkins will turn on them, and then just like WWE does with every other great tag team gets called up, they usually just. You know, break them up for no reason. And I'll have to give my props. I'll have to give them out. You're, you're going to love this. I'll give my props to Tito and Riddick. Yeah. They're slowly growing. I mean, they're they're getting legit heat, that's for sure. Like, these guys Riddick are doing. Riddick Moss sucks dick. I don't care about Riddick Moss. I think Tito's got something, though, man. He's like the, he's like the, it's... almost like the bodyguard to Tito. You know what I mean? But he kind of yeah, still feeds off stu- his He's ego. like the stooge that just walks yeah. around with him. But they put up a pretty good match, and I don't think this feud's over yet either. So Tito slowly impressed me. The guy is actually like getting better in the ring, which is great. So good for him. Um, parking or the the Dawkins, he's good, but he, again, he's slow compared to Montez Ford. It's such an uneven combination, but it somehow works. Uh, 
Riddick Mars tried to cheat at one point, but the ref caught him uh, holding uh, Dawkins' feet down, and then Montez Ford eventually hit his finisher, that beautiful-looking frog splash for the win. He does it so clean and so on point, and the Street Profits win two times in a row against Tito and Riddick Moss. I don't know where it goes from here, but uh, these guys are 2-0 and against them. I thought out. I I do have a critique. I think Tito and Riddick should have got a dirty win here because, I mean, now that the Street Profits have won two straight against them, it's kind of like, okay, well... If they're like going to continue it, I think match. I agree. If they're going to continue it, then yeah. If they're not, then I don't know what. Like, where do what do the what is, like Street Profits have to go somewhere from here? And we don't even get we don't even get the aftermath of uh, War Games, which I think they're just still playing to like these guys are still banged up from War Games, which it should be. That was like an incredible match. Um, I think Tito and Riddick could probably go against like Heavy Machinery or something. Yeah, if they if they're gonna if they're not going to continue this feud, they I mean they can't now. How are you gonna think you're gonna come back at two and zero? Like are these guys gonna have like a best of seven series? I really hope oh, not. Oh God! I really hope you can that play out the fact that, that idea. That heavy machinery is just like you know some some local bums, and Tito thinks he's better than them type thing, and they have like a feud with that. I mean, I could get behind that. Oh, that was a good match though. It was long. It was longer than I thought it was gonna be, but it was a decent opening contest. So Montez Ford yep. is just ridiculous, man. The guy, I can't believe how athletic this guy is. It's, it's insane. Like these guys are going to get very, very popular. The popularity is growing and growing. Like these guys are going to be as hot as Enzo and Cass were in NXT, if not that that they are right now. So, yeah. Greg uh, says worst TM six one. The one guy is still hurt, as far as I know. Yeah, they were. Well, they're supposed to be good to go. So maybe I don't know. Maybe the one guy had a setback, and maybe or they're you know they're doing stuff, or maybe they haven't had found anything for them. Maybe they're at light. I haven't really paid attention to. Like the NXT live events, I don't know if they're there or not. So maybe I'll have to start paying attention just to let you guys know. I probably should be. Um, we moved on from this. We had a WWE.com exclusive. It was about the UK guys, which they featured a lot of UK content this week. Lots. Mm-hmm. And it showed last week where Dunn was uh, approached by Trent Seven and Tyler Bate backstage. And uh, basically were like giving him shit for walking out on his partner in a, in another match. Uh, and then uh, told him that they challenged him to a, a tag team match, a, U, a British strong style tag team match, and uh, they told him to go find a partner if if people around here still trust you. <laughs> and then uh, Dunn, it gets announced that Dunn and uh, Mark Andrews uh, will face each other, will face uh, the team of Trent Seven and Tyler Bate tonight in the main event of NXT. And Mark Damn. Andrews, the only reason he teamed up with Pete Dunne is because Pete Dunne promised him a yeah. number one contendership yeah. match yeah. if they win. They just showed an interview after that where Mark Andrews said exactly that, and that's interesting. I'm like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of interesting. And Mark Andrews is a really crazy style. He's different. He's different style than the other UK wrestlers that we've seen on TV. Um, only, there's only a few of these types of UK people, uh, guys like Mark Andrews. He's a high flyer kind of uh, based yeah. UK person and we saw that in the match tonight but um mark andrews i think when we get on you know i'll get into it when we talk about it but we had a, like yeah, a what is sullivan what? promo package and I'm <laughs> it was like, like gene snitsky promo what, i'm going thing, like holy thing. shit like again the, the promo people down in nxt are fucking unbelievable man like i got i got hype for this and i'm not i'm not the biggest fan of ourselves i know he's a great like big wrestler and he got kind of need to keep building these guys but like Damn man, that promo got me intense for Lars yeah. Sullivan, and I, I just watching that promo, I'm going, oh my god! Like they're gonna build this guy up so hard that when he gets up to the main roster, like look out Strowman, look out Lesnar, like these are gonna be the number one feuds he goes against. Lars Sullivan, man, and Samoa Joe guys, like big guys, like Lars Sullivan is gonna be another guy to get called up to help these big guys that are on the main roster have more competition than the right the, the same people that they're facing every goddamn week. So yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, you were gonna say something. I think I interrupted you. Mm, no, I don't remember. Okay. Uh, we moved on. We had the women's match that was announced last week. And oh, we that's it what week. it was. I was. Oh. Uh, I was gonna say, what do they call themselves? The Mustache Men? Is that what oh, they called? the Mustache Mountain. Yeah, Mustache Mountain. Trent Seven and Tyler Bate, Mustache <laughs> Mountain. They did their hilarious walk when they come out in their entrance. I've died. Oh. Yeah, they we'll both were waving this week. Yeah. Oh, my God. Tyler Bates wave, man. I laugh every time I see his stupid little <laughs> wave to the crowd. And the crowd starts, like, waving back at him. 
it's great. If you ever want to see it, you're probably going to piss yourself laughing, but go back and watch Tyler Bates' entrance at Chicago, take over Chicago this year. <laughs> There's this one cut scene where they cut to the crowd and literally every other person's waving back. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Uh, yeah, women's match. We had Kari Zane, Peyton Royce face each other this week. I was mm, right. Peyton Royce. Mm. I can't, mm. man. I jaw drop every time. Every single time. It's a perfect uh, 10. One thing that I can't jaw drop to, and it, it's making me cringe now. I really hope they're working on it, but uh, Kari Zane's theme, yuck. <laughs> Absolutely like, horrible. It's like Cricket Central, man. It's, it's like just, the, one of those themes where it's just like, uh, it's what, like for example, like the beginning of uh, Cedric Alexander's theme, crickets. Yeah, yeah. It's the old, like, the yeah. old, the old beginning of uh, it doesn't get you hype. Theme. It just it doesn't get you hype at all. And for me, this is like the worst thing they could have done. The, the pirates going, oh, like what? How do we get hype for Kari Zane when you give me that theme song? I can't. It seems like she is not getting a reaction like she should be either. But there was nothing wrong with that May Young classic theme. It was way exactly what Michael Chelsea in the chat. It was way better. Maybe, maybe you know, they didn't want it because it was a May Young classic theme. <laughs> it wasn't technically her real theme. Ah, it was it, the new one's garbage. They got to change it. I really hope they do. It has to go. But uh, Peyton Billy K came out and they had <laughs> some hilarious shirts on this week. The each like so Billy K had a shirt that said "I love Peyton," and then. Billy K or Peyton Royce had a shirt that said "I love Billy" on it. <laughs> oh my These God. girls are like the ultimate bitch, like friend bitch tag. You team. just like, you just want to hate them, like and the yeah. shit they were doing in the match, like where like Billy was like, "Don't touch her!" Yeah. She like jumped up on the on the on the ring. Just such good heat, like they're perfect heels, like absolutely perfect. You cannot split these guys up or Girl. these girls up. Sorry, you cannot split them up. Oh, you know, you know what's gonna happen to get called to the main roster. It's like, oh, we gotta split them up, done. Yeah, that's why we gotta we gotta enjoy what we can before fucking Buck Teeth McGee up there gets a hold. Of him. Um, <laughs> it was a really good back and forth match this week. Really, really good put back. It was really good. I thought it was good. It was great. Billy Kay is really good, or Billy Kay. Peyton Royce is really good. Billy Kay is you know a good decent manager. She's annoying. She's like that annoying one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all you hear ringside. Yeah. And Peyton Royce during the match was getting kind of frustrated at a couple of the oh calls. Oh my god! Yeah, she kind of made like that. One, they like zoomed in on her face. On that her one face thing. reaction. I think that they're doing that on purpose. I think that's yeah. gonna be like a a a, a common thing with. Uh... So is it gonna be like when Alexa Bliss gets blissed off and starts yeah. like doing the fucking yeah. like temper tantrum in the ring? Is that what Peyton's gonna start doing? I think so. Uh, but Billy Kay tries I... to interfere, like you said, failed, didn't do anything. <laughs> And then Sane hits her uh, insane aisle elbow draw for the win. Yep. And uh, they, 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 if you listen to the commentary, they're they're making it seem like uh, could Kari Zane be the next one in line for the first one to be Ember Moon's uh, challenger for the number one contendership. And we talk about Ember Moon, who's won the NXT title now. And we, you think about it after now that we have time to think about it. It sucks. I think I really it should have. It doesn't mean as much as if if, if Oscar was down. And she kind of wanted off Oscar, but I know that their their goal was to keep her undefeated. But to me, it's like eh, it's like okay, she had to do it when Oscar was gone. So I don't know what their their plans are with Ember well, Moon. If they do, you can do a heel thing, or you know, like she does anything she can to win. I think that's probably what they should do. Is they make her that kind of champion? Like she does anything she possible to keep that title, no matter what. Like no matter what she does, that kind of heel. Well, plus we haven't really seen what her character is going to be because. It's mostly been like the secondary, second tier people that have been wrestling the last two weeks. Like the the main yeah. champions haven't been anywhere on TV. Because yeah. obviously comes back they're to what starting you said. that next week. There should be a mid card title, and uh, our boy JD brought up a good good point. He, like someone asked him, he's doing this whole social media thing on his show now, um, and someone asked him, like, if you were to have a mid card title NXT, what would you call it? And he thinks it should be called the NXT Dream Title named after Dusty Rhodes because they're doing all these things mm. but naming after Dusty Rhodes. I wouldn't mind just the keeping... The Dream Championship? Well, why don't you just keep the United Kingdom Championship? Or that... If, if they, the, yeah, we were talking about that the other day too. Like, Why don't they just keep featuring the, NXT, the UK people, man? You're just going to bring more eyes to NXT, man. And that's the <laughs> thing. Like, Pete Dunne's been defending it against NXT people, so why not just make yeah. it the, the permanent 
mid card title yeah, of NXT. And it looks like now they're mixing in some UK matches, like the British Strong Style matches. The crowd absolutely loves. Crowd, like they love it over here in North America. They love UK was, matches. I think you said last night. You're like, why don't they just scrap the UK show and just bring the UK guys to NXT? Yeah, scrap the. Yeah, scrap this idea of they calling it the King of the Ring and doing a weekly WWE UK show over there. I know it, it gives the fans over there something because they they barely get any shows over there, and I really feel bad for the UK people that like they get like Raw once a year and they don't get any pay per views because of the time differences. But I think that you can probably still have a UK show. Oh, maybe not. That's just, that's pretty hard. Never mind. But it keeps them interested. Like they can watch NXT every week and be like, okay, or, yeah. and, or you know, maybe we set aside one match every week for the UK guys. Why not? I think they should do NXT TakeOver London on a yearly thing then if they're going to do that. They yeah. have to have TakeOver London as a TakeOver every year, once a year. So, again, I, I it's, it's I'm on kind of like the fence about that. But, uh... Tarzan with the win. We'll see what happens from there. Um, <laughs> the Dream Championship should go to the Dream Man Velveteen. <laughs> uh, it was announced that next week, again, like this is what we were talking about earlier in the show, that Ruby Riot's going to face Sonya Deville in a no-holds-barred <laughs> match. Pun, 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 pun. Yeah, thanks for the plug there, NXT. But yeah. <laughs> why? Why is yeah. this even continuing? Like, now everybody knows they're on the main roster now. So, like, why is this even continuing? It's weird. It's so weird. Is this more, like unless they're going to incorporate, you know, which which faction is more dominant? I don't think they are because they're taped, right? These are tapings, so like it it, it probably happened before they got called up. <laughs> Great. So uh, also that uh, on next week we're going to get the Andre de Cien Almas Championship celebration hosted by Selena Vega. I cannot wait for that. I'm actually stoked to see that. <laughs> Still can't believe Almas is champion. It's just yeah. like wow. And I think that's where we're probably going to get uh, the next challenger. And speaking about that, uh, again, uh, I'll bring in another point from our uh, boy JD from New York over there. He actually had a good idea about what should go on with the NXT Championship from here. He thinks that um, at NXT TakeOver Philly, it should be um, Andre Cianalmas versus Johnny Gargano. And that he mm-hmm. thinks that Gargano should win the title. And that after Gargano wins the championship at TakeOver Philly, they should do this whole long thing where, like, uh, they, you know, kids, people go nuts for Gargano being NXT champion. Like, they could do this thing. He said they can do this thing where, like, he doesn't fit in NXT anymore and he really wants to get like get back into NXT because he's just been on a losing streak. And he ends up winning, like, a tournament or something to become the number one contender, beats Cian Almas, and then he holds the title for a bit. And then right up until he's allowed to get cleared and come back, Tommaso Ciampa comes in, and they have this big showdown at NXT TakeOver Chicago or NXT TakeOver the the WrestleMania weekend between Ciampa and Gargano. I don't mind him being the challenger. I don't want him to win it. Because, again, I don't want another quick NXT title change. It'll be like four pay-per-views in a row that they've changed yeah. the NXT title. title doesn't make sense to me. And we don't know how long uh, Drew McIntyre is officially out for yet. So, I, but obviously he's not going to be able to get his rematch well, yet. According to sure what he'll get it. sports injuries go by, they don't know it yet, but anywhere between six to eight months for a torn yeah. bicep. Well, when he comes back, is he going to get the Finn Balor treatment where he doesn't even get his rematch? I think you should get called get up. I think you should get called up, man. I think you'd be ready for the main roster. Yeah, you see, with the, yeah, because you know, it went great the last time he was on the main roster. <laughs> I do not want that at all. I want him to stay in NXT. I think he's better suited for there anyway. Especially with this cringe, terrible theme that they need to yeah. just go back to the broken <laughs> dreams. But Andre Cianalmas, man, he's dope. Guy is an incredible wrestler. Oh, my God. And a lot of people forget that this guy, before he came to WWE, he was, oh, I forget what his name was, uh, but El yeah, he wore a or mask. something like that. Yeah, he was the IWGP Intercontinental Champion, Intercontinental Champion for a long time, and he was like really, really highly touted before he came to the WWE. And then when they took his mask off and they gave him that gimmick, like when he first started out, people were like, "What the fuck is this?" Like people were like, "This is not the guy that we know." And he wasn't like he wasn't really wrestling, saying really letting him go. They're like, "What the fuck? Like what is this?" But they've really done wonders with putting Selena Vega with him, and now he's just become that. All, like he's slid right into the main roster spot so fast. I think he belongs there. and he, I think he's going to be a great champion. Yeah, well, I want him to have a, a actual decent title reign, not this, like, two-month thing. So. Because I hope it at least lasts till like, the WrestleMania weekend. 
Well, because NXT only has a pay per view every like four, like two or three months, so yeah. it's not like they have pay per views going every month like the main roster does. It'll be interesting. I can't wait for the celebration. I don't know if that's where we're going to get the first challenger or what. So we'll have to see you next week for that celebration. But uh, mm. what about here, what about Alistair Black? Uh, Is he done with Velveteen Dream yet? Yeah, I don't think he's. Championship. I don't think he needs a title to be honest. I think he's one of those guys. If he gets called up without winning the championship, because I don't think you you really need to win a title before you get called up. That's yeah, just well, my opinion. Well, now we have another call up. Hideo Itami's been yeah. To, they've been promoting him live. going to two five live, which I mean, R.I.P. his career. But um, <laughs> I think Black would be sick on the main roster. This guy is going to be huge. But I if they, I wouldn't mind if these guys had another match. If these guys had another match at TakeOver Philly, man, I'm, I'm all for it. They had an incredible match at this last TakeOver. I'm all for this this feud. Keep going, man. If there's something, maybe there's something more Dreams looking out to take to get out of Black. Maybe they, they, they further that storyline. I'm all for that. These guys had an epic match. If they're going to continue it, I give the green light. Give me the green light. So... Uh, from here, we moved into the main event, which was sick. Unreal tag match. UK hard, or I guess UK, what do they call it? British strong style tag team match. That's it. Tyler Bate, Trent Seven, Mustache Mountain, and Pete Dunn and Mark Andrews. And <laughs> Tyler Pete Bates Dunn. entrance. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking hilarious. I can't believe that. Their little walk they do, and they they both just like waving at everybody. Just, and everyone's like waving that. I love that. That entrance is great. When uh, Pete Dunn came out, man, did he get a reaction? Holy crap! Like he got a huge reaction out there. Yeah, People and they were, were the crowd chants Bruiser, Bruiser, Bruiser Wade. Yeah, literally the whole match. <laughs> and uh, it was a good back and forth match, man. I love UK wrestling. I love when these guys go at it because they just fucking they're it's literally British strong style. They they don't hold back. Like you see in the main roster, people in like regular style wrestling like, over here. More like you can tell, like they they give more elbows and it's like more like softer or they don't really hit you. Like UK people are fucking nasty, man. Sometimes yeah, they actually have, like hit each other. You're gonna have bruises when you're done a match with one of these guys. Yeah, well, you could see it. I don't know if anyone noticed it on Mark Andrews on his rib cage. He had a massive blue bruise after this match. Like it was huge. <laughs> then <laughs> it's just spot central too. Like it's crazy the amount of spots it. they have I in this it. match. I love it. Lots of uh, deception between uh, Dunn and Matt Andrews. I love that. Which was it was expected. Yeah, Dunn Pete just Dunn doesn't play Andrews. well with others. He doesn't the, play well with others. The so. best part was like when uh, there's that huge spot where Dunn tagged himself in, and Andrews is looking pissed. He's like, "You didn't like it," but he's like, "Ah, whatever." Does a Frankensteiner into Pete Dunn who power bombs the guy? Like that was <laughs> fucking insane. <laughs> it was like holy shit. Yeah, they did like a double spot. Yeah. That was awesome. But Tyler Bate looked really, really impressive in this match. He's getting better. And that guy's only 20 years old. Holy shit, yeah. dude. This guy's guy ever... the limit for Tyler Bate, man. He's hey. the future. Same with Pete Dunne. He's only 24. Like, these guys are just, like, these guys are the future. If they're going to – I'd sign both these guys long term. Like, I'd give them long, high-paid contracts. I would not let these guys go because their money. Like, look at their, their – their match is still match of the year. It might win match of the year for me. So, we'll see what happens. Um, lots of near falls, like we said. Uh, really, really close finish. But uh, Tyler Bate ends up hitting the Tyler. He calls it the Tyler Driver 69 and wins against Pete Dunn, of all people. I thought it was going to be at least against Mark Andrews. No, but Tyler Bate pins win. Pete Dunn, the UK and I don't champion. Mind it. I don't mind it in the tag team match. It's not like it was yeah. one-on-one. So I like that. I had Tyler Bate getting getting a big win over the champion there. Oh, I like smart it. Smart booking. Who would have thought? Yep. Trent Seven. Who would have thought that you can actually book a show smart? <laughs> Clearly, Raw and SmackDown don't know how to fucking do that. Yeah, maybe... I think Greg said it earlier. Maybe these guys should go after the NXT tag titles, uh, Bade and Trent Seven. I mean, I'd be all for that. Oh, my God. Those guys are hilarious. I would love them as the NXT. Can you imagine, like, a... Uh... <laughs> like a number one contendership match, like whoever wins is number one contender between Street Profits and, <laughs> and Mustache Mountain. <laughs> the charisma in that match is just through the roof, number one. It'd probably be the most hilarious match you've ever seen on <laughs> on TV. But it would be an would, insane match. I would also like to 
I'd also like to see Tyler Bate wave at like Eric Young and Eric Dunn Young do like, <laughs> like do some <laughs> like stupid, great. stupid face. Yeah. But I only say baby. Street Profits and, and Mustache Mountain because you look at a guy like Montez Ford and Tyler Bate. Guys are basically like the same. Like they're both athletic as fuck. And you got a guy like Trent Seven and uh, Angelo Dawkins are basically the same. <laughs> One's just British strong style. The other one is I don't know what the fuck Dawkins is. I don't know what to call that. <laughs> He's just slow. That's what yeah, he's he just slow style. King of slow style. Um, but after the match, Dunn uh, attacks Andrews from behind, just fucking literally like punches him in the back of the head. And you can hear that fucking smack from out of the arena. I was like, holy shit. And he's yeah. not done. He gets back into the ring. Dunn's not done. He gets back into the ring and then uh, gives him uh, his finisher. I forget what they call it. But it's uh, but Andrews sick. sold. Andrews sold it so well, though. Like, it was really well done. That match is or his finisher is sick, man. Pete Dunn's, I love that finisher. I like Tyler Bates a lot too. Oh, his too. Yeah, the Tiger, Tiger or Tyler Driver, classic, but he still does it clean. And then uh, Pete Dunn's version of the pump handle, he he, he does the pump handle slam, but he, he does like a different version. I mean, he twists you around and makes you land fr- like face first. Which is great. Um, but makes sense. Pete Dunn doesn't play well yeah. with others, so tax his tag team partner. No, nope. and if they're leading towards Tyler Bate versus uh, Pete Dunne again for the UK title, take my fucking money. Just take it. <laughs> I'm all for that again. I can see those guys wrestle for days. Yeah, and all the crowd chanting fight forever, too. Bitter end, that's what it's called. Thanks, Cooper Girl. Um, um, where does, like, Lars Sullivan go from here? Like, who the hell is he going to face? Because obviously he squashed Cassius Ono, which, thank God, get him off TV. So, like... What does he do? Does he because he can't face Almas? They're both heels. So like, what does he do? I really do? hope they don't feed Alistair Black to him. <laughs> I hope they keep the dream thing. But I gotta, and I don't hope they don't feed your boy Roderick to him. But I think they're gonna keep Maybe. the whole Roddy undisputed era thing going. What about like if AOP is out of the question? Maybe he feuds with like one of them. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, He's got a feud. Yeah, like but they don't heavy have machinery. Big, like who the like hell is he gonna feud with? <laughs> It's tough with him, man. I don't know what's a, going on with a few that. With him, a few with him and Gargano. Like, Gargano's going to get squashed by this guy. I don't want to see that. Maybe. Unless they plan on another what I big guy. See, I could see Killian Dane being a good feud for Lars. So I could see that being a good feud because the Killian Dane isn't really – he's with Sanity, but, like, he's on his own yeah. too. Like, and he they're has not doing the Freebird role. It kind of looks like Eric Young and, and Wolf are, like, they're the title held tire holders. So. And, and Dane needs to be featured more, so I'd love to see a feud with him and Lars Sullivan. That'd be – that's probably a, I think that's going to be it. I think you're right. I think you nailed it right on the head there because there's really nothing else they can do. And now lead into NXT Philly. You know NXT Philly is going to eat that up, man. They're going to have a really good, intense, big guy type of match. So, yep. I like it. I like it. And, uh, and a little, like Another slow start to the season, I guess you can call it for NXT. So, let's see what happens next week. We got the championship celebration. We got no holds barred match. And hopefully, uh, if it's not... The start of Lars Sullivan's next feud, maybe another promo package. And this promo package, like, it was playing his theme song. His theme song's a little weird, too. It's almost like he is, like, a, a genetic copy of Gene Snitsky, but, like, more, like, Beast. Like, a guy that Gene Snitsky wish he was. <laughs> wish yeah. he was. I know. There's, like, the that creepy piano at the beginning of his song. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I like it. Put Lars I'm, in the I'm, rumble. I'm, be, I'm be... starting to dig Lars Sullivan, man. He's coming around on me. Maybe because he kicked the shit out of Cash Sono, and then, yeah. like, I instantly loved him after that. But Not the best-looking dude in the world, but, like, yeah, he's, he's definitely <laughs> growing on people. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty ugly. That's why a few with him and Killy and Dane would be old, because they're, to they're me, both it's, just... To me, it's the beard. It's it's, <laughs> literally, it's, the, it's the beard that gets me, because he's letting it grow too much. He's starting to look Just like a bald Amish guy. Doesn't like trim it at all. It's just like all over the place. I mean, you got so Killian you... Dane doesn't shave his back. There you go. Maybe Freak versus the... Maybe There you go. I don't know. I'm not gonna say it, but uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> I don't know. To me, he just looks like a bald Amish guy. You know, that's it. <laughs> but yes, hopefully next week we get the start of the quote unquote new season with. All the you know the main champions back and starting these new feuds and yep. Adam Cole baby baby I need to hear an Adam Cole baby. Undisputed Era is growing on me too. I got I got a couple of guys growing on me. I got Undisputed Era is a sick faction. 
Pete Dunne, man, I love this guy ever since I've seen the first match and the uh, first Pete Dunne match in that UK Classic. Holy crap, was that ever sick. Uh, if you guys ever want to see a sick Pete Dunne match, I forgot who he faced. I think it was Trent Seven in the first match of the UK Classic. That was a dope match. But, uh, yeah, we're getting to that part of the show, guys. That is the list of ten. Ten. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's going to happen? You just made the list. That's right. Welcome to the list of ten, the part of the show where myself and Cobra Cappy have our superstar of the week that has a perfect ten rating, or the superstar of the week or moment that gets a uh, or makes the list rating. And we'll start off as always, Cobra Cappy. List moment this week is going up to the main roster. Oh, and it's going, here we go. And it's going to this whole Jason Jordan thing, man. <laughs> oh, oh my God, like. Jason Jordan has all the in-ring ability in the world, and I've never questioned his in-ring talent and what he's what his look is. He is he is a great wrestler, but his character is absolute dog shit. No, it's trash. And the fact, and the fact that they broke him up with American Alpha, which was way too early to begin with, I feel like he was put in a position to fail because he wasn't ready for that spot yet. And now it's just it, it's coming to light now. Like he's getting booed constantly every week. His promos are just so bad. I know it's they're probably going to do this whole heel turn on Kurt Angle thing, but, like, right now, like, they finally realize that this shit is not working, man. Like, this guy is just – every time he's he bad. comes on the TV, I just want to, like, mute the TV. Especially this just, week. Like, he has this nothing to say ever. Oh, my God. Or, no, what was it last week when he was, like, crying and talking? He's like, oh, my God, please don't ever do that ever again. Do not cry and talk the same fucking time. Please Why, don't do whoever that. Whoever thought Jason Jordan in a singles push was a good idea already, like, not even being on the main roster for a year, you deserve to be fired because yeah. this is clearly just complete dumpster fire garbage decision with this guy. So for Jason Jordan having another cringe promo with this whole cringe – Garbage storyline with Kurt Angle and God Triple H is involved in it. And I don't even know who else is involved in it anymore. You know what? You know what? You just made the list. That's right. They make it's, they make it's just garbage. List. It's just bad. <laughs> Jason Jordan is hundred percent. I promise. <laughs> and, and I want to like Jason Jordan because he's a good in ring talent, but mm-hmm. he's just not getting anyone invested in his character right now at all. Well. If I have to give a list moment, I'll give that one off the bat. I'm already assuming you know where it's going. I know it made sense for where they were, but <laughs> oh, the, come fact on. That, the fact no, that they're feeding no. it, he doesn't need to no. be on TV. It has. I'm sure he would have done fine if he wasn't back on TV. I'm sure he still probably would have won or done something with his mayoral status and all that crap. He doesn't need to be on TV. It, it, I'm sorry, Kane. You're making the list this week for me. And the fact that, like, you're – I know it's not your fault, but Finn Balor's being fed to you to bury because of something you said online and Vince McMahon just, you know, being a fucking dick like he always is right now. First, you make a stupid claim like that, Vince. Like, you think like you think Finn Balor's going to take that lightly? You're, t- you're telling a guy that gets the most over out of your entire Raw show – that he's not over enough to face Brock Lesnar? Are you fucking kidding me? That's why you won't make him face Brock Lesnar for the Universal title? Who are you going to make Brock Lesnar face at the Royal Rumble? Who? Are you going to be another Braun Strowman match that no one's going to give a fuck about? No. It should be Finn Balor because he needs at least someone. to. If they're going to build this whole promo against Roman Reigns for a WrestleMania, he's got to run through everybody and he's got to go. There. Finn Balor hasn't had his rematch, his official rematch for the Universal title yet. So when the hell is that ever going to happen? Are you going to wait till after Roman has it after WrestleMania? Never. It's ridiculous, but I'm sorry, but just because I do not want to see Kane on television in 2017 is fucking God. He doesn't need to be here. He's way too goddamn old for this shit. It almost looks like he doesn't even want to be there when he's in the ring, man. Like He's just like, why the hell am I here? Why the hell do I agree to this shit? It sucks, man. I feel bad for the guy, but I'm sorry. Kane, for you being on Raw in 2017 still and... You know, I know it's not your fault, but burying Finn Balor. You know what? You just made the list. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I do An want apologetic that. Apologetic list moment. I, they were in Knoxville, so I see why they did it. But, yeah, it was. Ugh. 
And I, I just want to point out that he has a new shirt out for his campaign, and it's like the old, it's like the Kevin Owens show font, you know, the old Raw uh, font, and it says Jacobs for Mayor. I'm like, I want that shirt. God, Jacobs uh, for Mayor. But yes, we'll move on to my ten moment. And since NXT is still, it was basically a, another live event this week with not much, you know, storylines or anything going on. I'll leave the t- I'll leave the one good part of NXT for you because I figure that's going to be your ten moment for uh, the UK guys. So I'm going to give it to. Um, I really do. I contrary to what people are saying about SmackDown right now, I really like the whole Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn dynamic going on against Shane McMahon. I think it's great, and now that they're incorporating Daniel Bryan in it, like maybe Daniel Bryan is on their side. I don't know what's going on, but he basically came out this week and said that, you know, we can't let these guys go. They're great talents, and they'll go to Raw and make Raw better, and now there's finally deception between Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon, which we haven't seen since, you know, SmackDown started as its own brand again, which was like, what, a year, a little bit over a year ago? Yeah. yeah. So. I'm okay with it, and I really like that Kevin Owens is going up against the the good authority, and Sami Zayn's becoming like his like you know guardian angel. I think he calls him now, and his stooge. <laughs> and with Kevin Owens beating Randy Orton this week, which was yeah. great, I, we were we were both pissed off. We're like, oh yeah, great, Randy Orton's gonna beat Kevin Owens again because Randy Orton needs to get another win. So I'm kind of giving it a, a ten moment to both the Sami and KO storyline with Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. And as well to KO in that main event against Randy Orton because it actually was an, an yeah. enjoyable main event. I like it. I've, I've, I've loved this thing, and I know there's a lot of people out there giving it shit, and I'm like, really? Like, give it a chance, man. Like, it's got to build. I know it's 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 been great so far, but it's gonna build to get. It's gonna get better. And, and Kevin Owens to work is with it. the best. Beside him and Miz are the two best guys at generating heat in a storyline. Mm-hmm. So there's no one better to go up against the, the the good authority than Kevin Owens and now the newly turned heel Sami Zayn. So for this whole storyline right now, and it you know growing this week, it's gonna get a perfect. That's right, perfect ten. So, there are some good things going on in the main roster, but a lot of the shit they don't know what they're doing. But there are some good. <laughs> Yes, Michael Shaw never explained why SmackDown Live's Kane is on Raw. I guess he's also a free agent. <laughs> Finn needs to go back to NXT take over. <laughs> wow. Uh, I get it. Um, but yeah. My 10 moments, obviously, you already know what it is, but it's uh, it's going to go to Jinder Mahal's promo this week. Obviously not. Relax, everybody. It's not going to fucking Jinder Mahal. There's no way my 10 moment is going to Jinder Mahal. Um, it's actually going to the UK, guys. Brent, or Corporate Cap was right. He's right. Uh, it was great. Is the only good thing about NXT this week? Uh, I, am, I, I Although I love the Street Profits, I care to give him a 10 moment. It's kind of a bland thing that happened this week. The woman's thing was all right. But uh, UK guys stole the show. I was looking forward to a British strong style tag match when they first announced it. I'm like, okay, this is dope. And it's going to be in the main event. They should put on a good show. Look at the guys that are in the ring. Uh, I haven't seen Mark Andrews since the Cruiserweight, or Cruiserweight, uh, the UK Classic, or UK Tournament. Um, he he was impressive. Tyler Bate is getting better. He really, really impressed me in this tag team match. He's, it looks like his time in the Indies in between his takeover Chicago until now, he's gotten a little bit better. Now he's got this mustache mountain thing, which I love with Trent Seven. And again, the whole wave thing is hilarious. But these guys put on a really, really good tag team match. Probably the best tag team match I've seen all year, to be honest, of any tag team match out there. I mean, I don't know. Usos and New Day kind of take the cake from SummerSlam. But uh, this is really a good tag team match. The whole, the huge spot that uh, Dunn and Andrews pulled off and what we got at the end, just perfect. Good way to end the show and good way to end the show happy. Like it's, I love how NXT just ends shows where you're you're sitting there you're like not pissed off or like did, not sitting there going, why the fuck did I just watch the last hour of the show? NXT always ends off something good that you're like, okay, I can't wait for next week. I'm pumped. Like I always feel good ending off NXT. So for UK guys putting on a good tag team match as always and hopefully coming over to NXT and being on NXT more and we're getting more of these types of matches, they get a perfect. Ten. That's right. Yeah, more UK guys need to be featured. And you not just say that in chat. Yeah, I would love to see Mayor Kane with Gulak. Drew Gulak for a better okay, 205 I, Live. I think that would be safe. If, if they did, like, if the Kane wasn't a wrestling Kane and he did, like, a Mayor gimmick, sure, why not? But the um, fact that he's wrestling and burying people, absolutely not. Get the fuck out of here. 
Drew Gulak, I want to point out, man, this guy is fucking hilarious on 205 Live, okay? With his whole PowerPoint presentation and the no chance oh and the no flips and jumps. He's getting over this PowerPoint like, thing, too. And then they're chanting PowerPoint during his match. I actually watched 205 Live this week. They were chanting, they were chanting PowerPoint during his match. Like, this guy is just a funny heel that you want to hate, and he's just doing a great job. Honorable mention this week for the what could have been my list moment was the fucking Zo Train thing. Oh my god, I can't I can't stand when they show <laughs> footage of them all doing the Enzo dance. I'm like, no, stop, stop. And yeah, maybe Kane, maybe Kane should just be the GM of 205 Live. That would be Kane. so ironically funny. <laughs> that would not ironic, but like it would just be funny. A guy that's like 500 pounds, the GM of a show that you have to be 205 pounds or less. He could just be the the goon GM, yeah. like he was like his corporate Kane. He was you know oh crooked my God. shit. And I'm also gonna give an honorable mention for the 10 moment to the fi- finally we got the breakup of the hype, the cringe hype bros, man. That finally those guys. Yeah need to go mojo raleigh every time he comes on the tv i just want to like just change the channel but now it seems like he's going to be a heel going up against zach Ryder, and i'm all for that a feud with those two guys going at it but them as a tag team just i couldn't i thought that zach Ryder would have been the heel in this one well i think they were teasing him going to be turn on mojo raleigh for months and ended in mojo so i kind of like the the swerve they made there <laughs> mayor kenya it's not a gm he's a mayor he's mayor of 205 <laughs> And Gulak's is like his assistant. <laughs> See, come on, this is like Ray. I'd actually probably watch, horror, man. man. I'd probably... <laughs> if two hundred five yeah, live wants to go back to credibility, you need this guy. Well, uh, I got some pretty crisp. Speaking of two hundred five live, I got some pretty cringy news. I don't know if you want to hear this. Um, you guys is out James there, Lusworth getting signed back to two hundred five live. No, unfortunately, oh. I guess not. Yeah. There to be because Facebook, Facebook, and Facebook Live. So they want 2018 for Facebook. Not talking about WWE. Facebook itself wants to make 2018 a big year, and they want to really get push their Facebook Live shit really bad in 2018. So they're incorporating like sources out there to make their 205 Live better. So they see that WWE does so good on on Facebook. They're actually in talks. And I'm sorry, you got to hear this. To have a. Uh, Weekly show to be shown on Facebook Live called. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, but the basis of it is just to have there to be mixed tag team matches. What? And it'll be shown after SmackDown's done. So you switch over to Facebook Live and watch this. None of the storylines on this show will be have anything to do with Raw or SmackDown. What's the point of it? And where's exactly. it going to be? When's it going to be taped? I don't know. Oh my god! This is a terrible... well, you know, two hundred five live. You know how they change the ring and stuff after SmackDown. It'll be that. So and what, apparently we... they're gonna make two hundred five live taped. So it'll be the tape show before SmackDown. So like, what are we gonna get Saturday morning slam all over again? Like, what is Basically, this crap? Like this, I already can tell this is not gonna work. They're gonna do it for a couple weeks and then they're gonna be like, uh, yeah, it failed. Because no one watches or no one stays in the arena. Why would no anybody get in invested arena. for just random matches that don't mean anything? Mixed tag team matches and storylines. Great. It's not like this mixed. It's like the mixed. Are they sto- gonna use? Like, <laughs> who, are they gonna use people from Raw and SmackDown? Are they gonna use like I NXT don't know. women or? It's just like I read this and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it seems like a clusterfuck garbage show that's gonna get canceled in a month and a half. Yeah, but that's the apparently that's the plan so far. God, Facebook Live. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I had to bring that cringe news up. You need to play crickets for that. Yeah, for, so for this uh, this idea of a mixed tag team show. Yeah, you get the crickets. <laughs> Nobody cares. Uh, anyways, getting to the last part of the show, and that is the tweets. Your tweets out there. We got some tweets this week. Start off with Glorious Greg at a Gilly929. What three superstars would you want to see face All Miss for the NXT title? So we got to give it a list of three superstars. I'm going to say Gargano, Valentine Dream. Well, it doesn't make sense. He's a heel, so I guess I do faces. Gargano, Roderick Strong, and Aleister Black. I, mean, I don't really want Aleister Black, but I can't really see anybody else. Uh, I'm going to say 
making his debut this week to interrupt Almas' uh, championship celebration, uh, James Ellsworth. Wow. And, well, you took my three guys. So, I'm like, sorry. what do you want me to say? The exact <laughs> three guys? I have to make up something stupid on the spot now. James Ellsworth, <laughs> Lars Sullivan, and mm. Greg Hamilton. Oh, here we go. Sawyer Fulton. There you there go. You go. Sawyer Fulton even, though he got, even though he got released. But, yeah, you took the three guys I was going to say because realistically, who else is he going to face? Right? Unless they, like, debut somebody out of nowhere, like Cody Rhodes comes back out of nowhere somehow. Duh. Duh. I can't believe you just said that. But uh, Glorious Greg, his next tweet says, My thoughts on NXT this week on Glorious Greg. I don't know what this gif is. I'm sorry. It looks like it's a video game or something from a movie. I apologize. I don't know what it is. Can you please tell me in the chat because I don't know. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, he'll tell me in the chat as I move on to the other tweets. And that is from Cubagirl125 at Seagirl125. She puts, even if NXT is at full sale or doing a house show, they always know how to deliver good matches. Some ta- someone give this brand a slammy. I agree. Questions. What do you think Velveteen Dream will do over the course of NXT? I would simply want him to either go against Gargano or possibly No Way Jose if he ever came back. Hmm. To me, I don't think Velveteen Dream is going to win the NXT title. I think he's just going to be that guy that just hangs around in the you know, secondary feuds and then eventually gets called up to do something big in the main roster. I feel like he's the kind of character that like Vince wants. Like he's got that like, you know, he's got that strong personality and character that can get over on the main roster because it seems like they only want guys with a bunch of like weird ass gimmicks nowadays. Yeah, I really so, don't see him winning the NXT title at all. He's going to be one of those guys who never hold the title. I think yep. in his whole NXT career, but he gets the right. I hope he gets the right push on the main roster. This guy is almost the complete package, man. It's it's insane. And you only get one of these superstars once in a while, man. Like that don't come over from the indies. So, uh, it's they need to do something with this. Actually, I think he did come from the indies, but this is actually doing great. So, I kind of agree with that. Uh, uh, no, uh, Velveteen Dream. Yeah. No, he was in. He was in Tough Enough. That's as, uh, where it was. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was in Tough Enough. I forget his real name. It's, it's Patrick uh, it's Clark. Patrick Clark, He's yeah. Tough Enough in 2015, and then, yeah. Yep, yeah, and then they re-signed him, and then he was at the Performance Center. So, you know, Vince, he loves those guys that are brought up through his own system, not the indie yeah. guys. You know he's going to get a push at some point. Yeah, so it's good. But unless they, unless they make a mid-card title, I don't really see Velveteen Dream having a title in NXT. Yeah, I agree. Uh also, if you had to replace the girls who got called up with any others, would you rep- who would you replace and who would you have instead? I would switch Sonia with Tainara Conti. Ooh. Oh, that would have been something. That would have made that stable pretty uh, – I think I would replace Mandy Rose with Tainara Conti. In any day, she would have been a fucking badass stable. We had a, 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 ju- a Brazilian black belt and a freaking girl who's been in MMA. Like, <laughs> like no I... one would be able to stop these people. <laughs> But Mandy Rose, she she was on the main. Remember, she even had like a rookie card in the set last yeah. year. You know, she wasn't even on the roster. But like, she's been there for a while. I can see why they called her up, even though she hasn't been doing anything on NXT except house show. We saw her in yeah. NXT St. Catharines at one time. You know what would have been cool? I think if instead of uh, I think Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose maybe on SmackDown with Ruby Riot. I think iconic duo should have been Pages, too. That would have been sweet. Cause I, they make more sense. Like it, the thing with these groups is like the the three girls together, they just don't seem like the same kind of people. They're all like, yeah, they're all completely different. That's why I feel like I was like Liv Morgan with Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan. I was like this to me that didn't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. I guess Sonya um, Deville and Mandy Rose were in the same tough enough. Yeah, there you go. And 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 Paige was the the judge yeah. of tough enough or the coach then so that's I would love to see makes... iconic with Paige man they just seem like they would be like those types of characters like all three of them together like and how iconic so acts long. Paige would act the same way I could see and it. I feel like I feel like those two are ready too like the rest of the girls yeah. are still raw like I, I don't know I don't think they should have called up these girls when they were still raw I think they should have developed them a little bit more and the, the SmackDown one just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. I don't think Ruby Riot should be the leader of the group, first of all. That's mm. my first problem with it. And 
Liv Morgan makes absolutely no sense in this faction. I think they should have maybe just called up Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan, had them singles, and just add to the brand. I mean, you can even have Sarah Logan up there, but I don't think they they should have just scrapped. They should have not done the same and been lazy and the exact same faction. Like it's really like what are they gonna are gonna are they gonna have to wait to see what Paige and them do on one week and we're gonna get the same exact thing on SmackDown? Like what's gonna like happen the- here? They could have at least waited like four months to do it for SmackDown. That would have even been better because at least they wouldn't be going on at the same time. But then again, then one brand would have looked like shit compared to the other brand. But yeah. to, to me, the, the, the SmackDown uh, group just doesn't make any sense to me with the three people they chose. <laughs> Michael Chow, you read my mind. Still waiting to see Carmella versus Carmella Jr. Liv Morgan. <laughs> yeah. And now, those and girls now, like the same. And now Liv is going to be uh, on the same show as Enzo, so you know that's going to be interesting. Awkward. <laughs> Anyways, uh, last tweet from Cupid Girl. Finally, how was you two Thanksgiving break? Well, ours was in October, so for Americans, <laughs> it's like normal for us. We kind of just did a little. I did a little bit of Black Friday shopping. That's pretty much it. Uh, you two deserved it after last week's horrific Raw and SmackDown. I can't wait for next week when the Woken One rises again. Yeah, so I think we're going to have to wait a little bit for that. Um, I think we're just going to get teased for that for a while. But, yeah, we don't have Thanksgiving in November. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't eat turkey at all, but I did watch all the football that was on TV. That was kind of, kind of cool. Yeah, Michael Chow says, rumor they pushed the call-ups for the Women's Royal Rumble, which I've been calling for fucking two years now, along with the money in the bank. Obviously, it's not going to be 30 women like the men's is, but at least like 15 15 or 20, I would say. To me... (sighs) Why didn't they just... Why did they have to call them up? Why didn't they just just randomly have that? Do you think they need to have a Women's Royal Rumble? Like, Do you you think it takes takes away from the main one? No, because they can have that one open the show. And get people like a little bit invested into the whole Royal Rumble thing, and then they can have the matches in between, like they always do, and then have the men's at the end. And maybe it won't be the same rules. Maybe it'll be like every minute a woman comes in. You know, like it's not gonna, obviously it's not going to be an hour and a half like the men's one is. But everyone's pushing for this women's equality thing, which I mean, I'm all for. Yeah. And you know, the the, the women want to like the women's superstars themselves want to do everything the guys doing better. So I'm sure they've been pushing for this for a long time, just like the money in the bank. But hopefully this one isn't a flop, like having Ellsworth win. So if the... it's a yearly thing, they're going to need to keep a lot of women on the roster. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, both both of them got three extra added to their roster. So, I yeah. mean, I'm all for it, to be honest. All right. And our last set of tweets comes from our 2016 Fan of the Year. That's right. It comes from Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV. He gets his theme song played before we read his tweets. And guys, if you want your theme song played before we read your tweets out there, all you got to do is win our our fan of the year. And that is our 2017 fan of the year, which will be read out at our Slammies. And if you want to win that glorious award, all you have to do is tweet at us and interact with us. And you're automatically entered in to be our 2017 fan of the year. And it is fast approaching, guys. Our Slammies is a couple of weeks away. Probably going to do it sometime after Clash of Champions. And then uh, we'll get the date out to you guys, and it'll be a jam-packed award show. Probably going to be live on YouTube. I still haven't figured that out yet, but uh, it's going to be out for you guys. Don't worry. Don't worry yeah, about we're that. Gonna, that'll be you know around Christmas time, a couple yeah. weeks before usually. Yeah. But I'll, hope, I'll try to be at your house for that. Yeah, it's a long gonna, show. We're going to have to wait for Clash Champions just in case. Yeah. Something might happen at that. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a great match between, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> well, I there was that one year where we had the Salida Del Sol off the ladder, which ended up being move of the year. Yeah, TLC. Yeah. Um, so, yep, that's that's it, guys. That's how you win. And that will be announced. Uh, we got to get the list of names and have to uh, pick it out. So we'll yeah. see what they that. It'll probably be the first award of the show just because people are going to be waiting for that. <laughs> Yeah, Michael Chow, you got you got your theme for a couple more weeks, buddy. Yep, that uh, that rock version of uh, TJP's theme, and you got to choose it, guys. I'll play whatever, whatever you want. I'll play a thirty second version of it. Just make sure it's good enough for thirty seconds, because I don't want to go any longer than that. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm hoping somebody picks Big Show's theme or no. Ellsworth's theme or Jinder's theme. <sighs> <laughs> Anyways. 
Let's get into his tweets. Michael Chow TV, guys. He, again, he has his own wrestling podcast. Go check him out. Follow him on Spreaker as well. And follow him on Twitter at Michael Chow TV. He puts, I missed half of the show because the wonderful Derby Network had a glitch for the West Coast people showing some of other shows instead of NXT. But what I saw, it was okay. Yeah, that sucks. I tweeted about that. I was like, oh, you guys come up to Canada. It's all good up here. <laughs> yeah, you just pay an extra $2. Uh, NXT needs to do live tapings for their shows or at least the go home and post pay per view shows because Ruby Ryder Sony Deville next week on NXT does not make sense. 100% exactly agree. what I said. Definitely agree with you there, Michael Chow. It really doesn't make any sense, but it is what it is. Uh, question We've se- We have seen NXT stars enter the Royal Rumble but have never won. Would you like to see an NXT star win the Royal Rumble one year and the winner faces the NXT champion at the NXT TakeOver? Uh, the WrestleMania weekend. It's never been done before. It would be a great push for NXT. I think if that ever happened, they should actually have the match at WrestleMania. They should include that NXT title match at WrestleMania. Like one NXT match on the WrestleMania card for the NXT championship. To kind of promote they, NXT yeah. for people yeah. that don't don't have the network because they can, everybody's watching WrestleMania, yeah. right? So they'll be like, oh, maybe I should buy the network and watch the show. And if they really wanted to, they can have it as the cooldown match between the, the main event. You can have the NXT title right there. It's a good way to promote. I don't know if Vince would ever put it that far in the card. They probably he probably push it for the, the pre show, if anything. <laughs> but uh if that were to happen, I I'd say yeah. I'd say but I, I think not at the takeover event, but actually put the match on the WrestleMania card. So that's just my opinion. Uh, next question. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, nope. go ahead. I'll read it after. Oh. Based off the last question, would you like to see who would you like to see the be the first NXT star to win the Royal Rumble? And who do you imagine a winner facing at NXT TakeOver? He puts my right, TakeOver WrestleMania. I'm going to say WrestleMania. My pick would be the Royal Rumble winner would be Aleister Black to face NXT champion Adam Cole, baby. <sighs> just hmm. dudes. Due to recent hype, I'm going to say Lars Sullivan. <laughs> I'm going to say Johnny Gargano because it would be like the ultimate baby face thing. It should be – it would be like a slap in the face derby who should have had Dana Bryan win the one year. So, you know, people would want to have Johnny Gargano win the Royal Rumble. Vince would never let Johnny Gargano win a Royal Rumble. I know, Rumble, but it's just it, – that's what it would be. And then you go on to face whoever the champion is, whether it be – I'm going to say – he could be a Sion Almas because you know they put on a really good match and he could probably put on a really better match at WrestleMania or if the champion ended up being Adam Cole. I still think Gargano Adam Cole would have a sick match too. So that's my pick. Either uh, either face Cole or Almas. I'd say Cole first, so I'd have to agree with Adam Cole as a champion going into it. I might biasly go ahead and say Roderick Strong too because I might be able to finally get Roderick Strong over. Yeah, versus Adam Cole. That's like an that's like a WrestleMania type match right there. Because Roderick Strong still is having a hard time getting over. I mean, people want to cheer for the guy, but he doesn't really have the he doesn't really have the backing right now. He doesn't have the character. He's not winning enough matches for us to get mm-hmm. invested in him. Mm-hmm. And Michael Shaw puts in lastly, Absolution obviously sounds like Evolution. Triple H runs NXT. Do you think there is a connection between Absolution and Triple H? Perhaps Triple H brought up this team to trash on Kurt Angle's women's division to further screw Angle over as a Raw GM. Mm, Hashtag Michael Shao creative. We got some more creative juices from the host. I could definitely see that from Triple H, you know, trying to kill from within. You know, I like that. Mm -hmm. Because obviously we're going to get Triple H and Kurt Angle at WrestleMania. Like, that is inevitable. Yeah. That's what I'm for sure going to happen. But I see that. That'd be awesome. And then... He could definitely have Paige. It would make a lot of people would say, "Oh, this makes sense because Paige is on the main roster." But Paige is like Triple H's like star. Like Paige set the women's division forward in NXT, and I'm going to say it biasly in the the main roster too. I know she had help from AJ Lee, but it was because of her and AJ Lee that the main roster women's division finally got the boost. And then the NXT. Like when it was still fresh, Paige was the first champion, and she basically got the pedals going. So I can see Triple H, you know, saying like, "This is the this is like my star child for the women's division and what it is today." So I can see exactly what Michael Chow is saying there. That'd be sick. I would love to see that. That'd be dope. Yep, that's yep. I like that too. <clears throat> but that is it for the tweets. Thank um, you, ladies and gentlemen, for tweeting in. Apparently, Leo Rush competed at an NXT live event, so finally, wow. uh, his after punishment's his controversial over. tweet, 
Finally, he's oh, back. Oh God, he's you know what? He's young. He's not. I know he's he, for twenty two. He should know better, but I'll give him a kind of a slap on the wrist, and yeah, hopefully he's learned I mean. his like, lesson. Uh, he, he deserved to be punished, but like not like completely banished from the company. Like he said one thing. It wasn't like you know. Yeah. And they did, they, the, right, they guy, did the right move. They did the right move to punish him. They just kept them off TV and kept them off everything. They made they got they, they made him get squashed that one time, and that was it. That's a good punishment. And he'll, hopefully, he um, learns from it. Yep. Move on. Yep. But uh, I don't know if you saw this or not, but it was just like uh, when I saw the pictures of this thing, I was like, it looked so weird. So like apparently there was like a March of Dimes dinner this week with like a bunch of people in like like it was like a like a you know like a dress up dinner type thing. The people from like the March of Dimes uh, uh, agency in the states, and then like a bunch of wrestlers came and they were all in like their wrestling attire and what they the were fuck? like, and they were like running around the dining room or like the where wherever they were having this event, and they were like collecting donations and shit. But they were all in like, like they were all decked out in like their rest, the like their in ring attire, okay. up with <laughs> with a bunch of, you know, people in suits and nice dressed up attire. And then you had like these wrestlers just walking around collecting donations. It was like, what was this? Were they like old just... wrestlers, like really, really old wrestlers? Or... No, like Sasha Banks was there. Oh, Zania okay. Jax, I thought you uh, meant like Alexa old Bliss. school wrestlers, like no, in their, like, they... <laughs> overweight no, attire. No, like I, like I'm looking at a picture right now of Sasha in like her full out like entrance attire, hmm. and like there's just a bunch of random like old dudes in suits what and shit. Fuck? And I'm like. It's just like, do they really need to be in like their full wrestling attire for this event? Like, I know they yeah, wanted to collect they donate. They don't even. They're not even their full attire when they do sick kids and make a wish. It's kind of weird. You know, like Stephanie and Triple H were in suits at the podium. Like this thing just it looks like something Vince and Dunn put together for a fucking Monday yeah. Night Raw. <laughs> it's like the whole uh, uh, was a food fight thing. I was yeah. waiting for a food fight to break out of this thing. God, but. God. I was. I just saw that, and I'm like. Still, the question remains: Who pied Kevin Owens? We still don't know. (laughs) Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for the show, guys. Again, we had a week and a half absence, two week absence. We're back. Well, sort of. Um, I'm gonna try to get. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to get WWE headlines this week. So stay tuned for that. It'll be YouTube again. It's YouTube Live exclusive, and that's where the video part of these podcasts will come out from. And our lowdown show will strictly be on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher. And I'll convert over to maybe, maybe not. I'm still working on uh, what we're gonna do for the show for 2018. Um, still got some. I wrote it down somewhere. I think it's in one of my iPhone notes about what we should, what the plans are going forward with the podcast for 2018. And probably be released those ideas at the Slammy Award show. So guys, stay tuned. Again, I know we've been absent from a lot of stuff on Twitter and YouTube and streaming and all that stuff the last couple of weeks. Just been really, really busy uh, with work and just other stuff going on. So, eh, and I've kind of had the blues lately. I don't know. It's yeah. just been like I haven't been really excited for wrestling lately. It's just like yeah. every time, it's tough. A couple it's times, tough. A couple times a year, you get in these ruts and you're just like, ugh. Like, I still love watching it, but it's just, like, sometimes I just I need a break sometimes. Yeah, we love you guys, and we still want to give you guys content and podcasting. So bear with us as we go through, I guess, this rut. But we'll still uh, still get this some, still get shit done for you guys. We love you guys. We, we love and appreciate all the support you guys have had for us and gone through everything, ups and downs with us throughout this entire year since we became, I can't even say famous, I guess, a year and a half of actually being noticeable <laughs> i don't know <laughs> again yeah. we do this for for hobby we're, we're, we do this as a hobby we don't look for revenue we're, we're not one of those podcasts that tries to make it big it's just something we do we we started one day and yep. we've kept doing it ever since and if we're gonna try to make the slammy show the best ever, the best it can oh, be yeah. like it i got lots everywhere. of ideas for that and guys it's gonna be probably youtube live based and if you guys love my beautiful face and love the video parts of these podcasts, I'm probably going to be in a suit. Just going to be saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, "Yeah, I'm gonna I think we got to nice. dress up for this. We got to yeah, dress up for the Slammies." Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to be, be like good. a two-hour show, man. Yeah, get prepared. You get, when we get the date, I'll free up your calendar and uh, get your popcorn ready. It's going to be a great this show. Is, this is my favorite show of the year every year. So I think I'm going to have the Skype lines open. We're going to get people to call in. We're going to make it really, really good. <laughs> so I even make it like a whole fucking half day thing again, yeah. but. <laughs> We'll a see. half day award show. <laughs> but usually, what we do is you're going to release a Twitter account at some point with asking yep. what you guys yep. think of uh, each award, and then we'll yep. read I'll them on air. Then. Yeah. So, but 
That's going to wrap it up, guys, for this week. Thank you for tuning in to the Lowdown Show remix right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE, NXT, and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred at WP. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow uh, my co-host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. You can follow the podcast on Instagram at No Holds Bar WP, all one word. If you're into that Instagram thing, go give us a follow on there. If you want to listen to the podcast on the go, we're able to listen to it on iTunes and Stitcher and Spreaker, where we are always live right here on this app available for all Apple and Android devices. Guys, it is a fantastic app. If you haven't downloaded it already, go download it. I highly suggest you do it. It's free, and you can sign up and chat with us while we are live on the air. And all video versions of all video version content of the podcast is available on youtube.com slash nhbwr and go give us a subscribe and hit that bell icon for all upload updates we've just reached over 500 subscribers guys thank you so much for your tremendous support and getting us over 500 especially to the last podcast we're getting that little boost at the end there thank you we couldn't thank you i guess we can't thank you enough for that 500 goal and let's try to get us to 1000 in i don't know i'm gonna give us a five-year gap until we get to 1000 <laughs> but i'm the self-proclaimed greatest host kyle masters as always i'm always joined by my co-host on the lowdown show he is the blissful boss mr corporate himself corporate cappy oh yeah and we're always uh, as <laughs> oh yeah as always we're always reminding you to keep it on the lowdown What you gonna do?